Hey y'all and welcome to the seventh video of the particle system series. So today we are going to see how we can actually move our particles writing some transform feedback shader code. So first of all let me actually change the color of these particles to white so we can see them a bit better. Now if you remember from last time every time I press the space bar the particles are going to go up because in our shader we are simply summing up a vector to the position of the particles that then gets written to the output position and so we create the transform feedback loop. So let's see now how we can actually formalize the way in which we make our particles move. Well, we could use some real physics formula in order to make the particle move. That's actually the easiest way to um, animate particle systems. We will just animate them simulating some real world physics. So first of all, how does an object move? We know that an object moves when a force is applied to the object. And it doesn't stop until another force is applied. For example, if we push a ball into the space, into the universe, then the ball will never stop unless uh, it will meet an object or another force acts on it. On Earth, if we push a ball, at a certain point it's going to stop because of attraction with other objects. So, in order to move an object, we know that we need a force. So, what is exactly a force? We know from the second uh, Newton's law that a force is equal to the mass of an object multiplied by the acceleration of this object. So, in order to know which force uh, an object is being subject to, we have to look at this mass and multiply it by the acceleration. So, the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity which means the change in velocity, so in speed and direction, at every instant of time. Now, when working with computer graphics, our smallest instant of time is a frame. So our acceleration will be the rate of change of velocity at every frame. So if we consider the mass of every object to be equal to one for the moment, we can say that our acceleration, that our force, is simply equal to the acceleration. So to know which force is applied to the object, we simply have to look at what is the rate of change of velocity at every frame. And uh, the same goes for acceleration, so acceleration is equal to the force. So let's go inside our main function and create a couple of force that we will use to move our particles. Now one force we already created is our gravity force, let's say. So as you can see, this is a vector tree. So let's put this vector tree inside a variable, which we will call gravity force, or simply let's call it gravity. And then let's assign this vector to this variable. So the variable gravity now contains the values inside this vector tree, which simply pushes the particles up. But since it's gravity, and we are used to think about gravity as a force that pushes objects down, so let's actually reverse it so now the objects will go toward the bottom of our window. Then let's create a new variable, call it acceleration. So we will have a variable inside our shader code that keeps track of all the forces applied to an object, because we could have also multiple forces, not just gravity and the acceleration will be the sum of all those forces calculated from scratch at every frame, and then this acceleration is going to be summed to the velocity. So let's create this variable and call it acceleration. And let's initialize it with a vector three uh, that's just set to zero. So at the beginning of our shader pass, uh, the acceleration has a value of zero. There is no acceleration. But then we can say that acceleration is plus equal so it's equal to acceleration plus uh, the force that we want to apply, in this case gravity. And we can write this simpler by writing plus equal. So plus equal means gets this variable and sum its current value to another variable or to another value. So in this case we sum it to gravity, our force. So the acceleration for this frame is equal to the amount of gravity that we choose inside this vector. Great. Then let's create uh, another variable and call it, let's just call it velocity. So this will be the velocity from the previous frame, first of all, because as we said, an object doesn't stop moving unless some other forces um, stop it. So at every frame, we need to get the velocity from the previous frame. So the speed and the direction in which the object is moving, this is velocity, let's write it down. So we need to get the velocity of the object from the previous frame and then sum it to our acceleration. 
So let's do like this. Velocity equal to I velocity. So this will be the velocity from the, the input velocity from the previous frame. And then let's say velocity plus equal acceleration. And then we have to pass it as the output velocity. We have to pass velocity. So the, our output velocity will be equal to basically our input velocity plus the acceleration. Maybe it's actually better to just write it input velocity plus acceleration. This makes it a bit more neat. So let's delete this variable velocity, which we actually don't really need. So this is going to be our input velocity plus the acceleration applied at this frame. Great. Then the uh, output position will be simply the input position plus how much the object has moved in this frame, which is exactly the value that we just assigned to output velocity. So at every frame, the object will have as a position its previous position summed to whatever change in its velocity has occurred in this frame. So it's simply input position plus the value that we assign to output velocity. Okay, great. Now, if we try to now activate our transport feedback, you can see that uh, the particles are just falling down, as we would expect. I'm activating the transfer feedback with the space bar, as we said in the previous video. Great. Let's now create another force, just to show how we can sum up the forces at every shader pass, so at every frame. So let's create another force, back tree, and let's call it wind, for example. And let's assign to this a vector tree that pushes our particles on the right. So we will give it a small value that pushes the particles to the right for the x, 0.0, .0 for the y and 0.0, .0 for the z. And then we basically need to sum to the acceleration. So to the current value of the acceleration, we need to sum also the wind. That's it. We never need to touch anymore the output velocity and the output position, this will uh, all be set at the end of the shader pass with those lines of code, we just need to work now on the acceleration. So if we activate the transform feedback now, you can see that the particles are going down but also going right. If we command out the gravity force, you will see that the particles only go toward the right. Great. So this was it. I want to keep those videos very short and uh, just talk about a single topic uh, in every one of those videos. So I will stop it here. So in this video we saw how we can move the particles using the second Newton law, which states that the force is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration. And if we consider the mass to be one for all our particles, then the force is simply equal to the acceleration. So the acceleration is simply equal uh, to the sum of all forces applied during a single frame to our particles. Great. In the next video, we will see how to actually apply a different value of mass for every particle. And we will then see how we can constrain the particles to be always inside a, a certain area and never just disappear from the screen. Okay, thank you very much for following. See you soon in the next video. I remind you to uh, like this video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Check out my videos on my website. Check out my Patreon page for more content and to join the community. And uh, see you soon in another video. Ciao.